Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and I'm here to show you how I am making my cosmetic pouches. Stay tuned. <laughs> cutting and I'm actually cutting out four cosmetic pouches right now and I have two completely cut out and I thought maybe I should start doing a video on the pouches this pattern originated from Christine's home affairs YouTube channel so I will give you a link to the video where I got this pattern so that you can also do that and we'll talk about the pattern later, but what I want to show you is the cosmetic pouch itself. One thing I really love about uh, the cosmetic pouch is, depending on your type of interfacing, you can make this bag freestanding on its own. I like that it has double zippers here. And that when you have your items in here, which I will insert a photo of, one where I have the items inside the pouch and you can really get in and when you're traveling you don't necessarily have to unpack all of your belongings out of your bag I just put this on the counter in the bathroom and then I go ahead and work out of this and put everything back as I'm using it now this is a customer's bag so I've got just a few extra things in here that I'm giving I also have done something different with the lining. We're going to talk about that. And I have also done something different with the interior. And we're going to talk about that. So keep those two things in mind. I also have added my brand label tag. Christine also add that to hers. I don't think she verbally mentions it. But I do add that to my bag as well. And we are going to put this back in here. So I can close it back up. <laughs> and I love too that it has a top carry handle. And Christine's instructions also go through that. Now this is maybe the second bag that I made. Every time I make this bag, I do some adjustments to changes. And my handle has a small adjustment as well. Also, how I actually sew this pattern together has changed as well. Uh, it was hard for me to turn through this entire bag with my type of interfacing through a 3-inch opening. So I have changed how I am cutting my pattern as well as how I am sewing my pattern together. So let me move some things out and we'll get started. Alright, <laughs> so one of the first things that you're going to need to do is to draft your pattern. I am not going to go over how to draft the original pattern because I want you to go over to Christine's YouTube and watch her YouTube. Uh, I don't want to take credit for her pattern. I'm just trying to give people some suggestions for how to piece this pattern a little bit more easily, especially if you're using uh, interfacing that has some stability to it. I think when she made the bag, she used iron-on fusible, if I'm not mistaken, or either a SF-11, I mean SF-101, but I think she used the fusible. But you'll have to go watch her video. It's been a while since I've watched the video. Um, she does tell you that you need a 22 inch zipper and we are using double pull zipper as you've seen previously. Um, I added an inside pocket so I am cutting that four and a half by six and a half. If I'm cutting two pieces and then if I'm cutting it from one piece of fabric I cut four and a half by twelve and a half. Um, you're going to need 21 inches of fabric. Uh, so that's a square, 
and then you're going to need one from your main fabric one from your lining and then I also cut one stabilizer all of this is cut 21 inches it's cut a little bit bigger and I'm going to tell you why in a minute uh, for your fabric strap the handle that was on top you're going to need approximately a 5 by 10 piece 5 inches is a standard number 10 inches you can make your handle is how long you want a stabilizer for strap I add that in that is one and a quarter by nine and a half so that's something that I've added into mine fabric tabs you're gonna need that two each the width of your zipper by five inches so if you're using a number five zipper you're probably gonna be having a zipper that's one and a quarter inches you can always cut one and a half inch strips and then sew your tab fabric on and then trim it off later um, I did right down on here where I've got this pattern from and uh, I think on her site she says she sells it for $60 Australian I converted that and uh, wasn't quite enough for the work that I'm going through and the products that I'm putting into this so let's talk about what products am I putting into this so again you're going to need your main fabric here your lining fabric and I don't have a separate piece of stabilizer cut 21 inches but I am using basically soft and stable interfacing which is a little bit um, more flexible I guess it's a little bit easier to sew and then another interfacing that I'm using is NR foam by Bozo and those are the two things I happen to have a lot of Bozo in our foam here so I'm using that to get rid of it but I uh, think it's just a tad easier with the soft and stable because it's a little bit uh, not as dense as the other so you can make a choice on that another item that I have also added to this is that when I make my cosmetic bags I would like for them to be waterproofed and I also want my linings to be a lighter shade if possible from my outer side in the same color family if you're like me I didn't want to purchase waterproof canvas or something similar to that water resistant uh, canvas I would have been buying that in all the colors because I know how I am so what I decided to do was to buy Pellon's iron on vinyl so let me show you that on the boat it's actually Pellon it's Pellon 102 vinyl fuse matte finish they also have a gloss finish and at Joann's it's regular eight dollars and forty nine cents per yard so I do wait for things like this to go half price so that I'm not paying full price if I can get more than half price that's even better <laughs> but I did iron that onto all of my pieces this vinyl fuse is only 20 inches wide and let me see if I can find the bottom so when I'm cutting my pieces 21 inches I am overlapping about an inch and a half of my vinyl fuse that's going to be down in the bottom of my bag so it will not matter as much down towards the bottom of the bag and I'm doing that because I'd rather do that than to have any of my fabric exposed so if you waste shampoo or something like that your toothpaste comes open you can wipe it clean and you don't have to worry about staining the inside fabric of your pouch so that's why I'm using this fabric so we're gonna put this aside for a minute and I'm going to move these out as well and I want to talk about my piece here I have cut my piece as I said 21 inches and the reason why I do that is because I realize uh, two reasons one is that I changed the pattern and number two is I realized quickly that when you're stitching on anything thick like any of the foams you're going to have some shrinkage and I had difficulty cutting my piece out once I cut a 20 inch square so I have cut a 21 inch and then I don't quilt it heavily I'm one of those people that I don't like uh, product my foam 
uh, on my bags or my interfacing to come apart from my bags so I tend to quilt down but you don't have to do heavy quilting you don't have to do like a one inch grid all you want to do is just do some I do this random with my feed dogs up on my brother um, so you can do this on a regular sewing machine I did not take this to my long arm just random quilting I quilted all of my front my outside main fabric pieces this way once I finished quilting I went ahead and squared up all of my fabric on the outer edges so that I made sure that I had fabric and stabilizer all the way around and even if my fabric didn't have stabilizer I wasn't really concerned about that but most of the time it all worked out you can see right here where I have a little sliver of fabric showing that's even a bonus more than a hindrance so because I really would have liked to not put the stabilizer in the seam but since I quilted it down there is no way I could do that and then I have cut out my pieces from my lining already and you should already see a difference if you've watched Christine's video already is that this is normally in one piece so you would actually take this here fold it in quarters put your pattern on here and so you'd have a fold at the bottom and a fold on the side and then you would cut your pattern out now since I'm cutting with this thick fabric I could not rotary cut through all of those layers I can only rotary cut through two layers and that still wasn't <laughs> my main concern I just would go ahead and mark and then scissor cut everything out so that still wasn't my concern my concern came when it was time for flipping the bag inside out so my solution for that <laughs> was to cut this into two pieces as you see here so what I'm going to do now this is my bottom you if you can I don't know if the camera will pick up because this is the same where I've got my vinyl fuse overlapping but what's going to happen is I'm going to have this as my bottom seam and I'm going to flip my bag out through the bottom seam like you normally would in any other uh, tote bag that you're making so how did I do that I took the original pattern I retraced it out and I just made my uh, pattern on butcher paper freezer paper and what I did was down here on the bottom I just added a quarter of an inch now for a seam I normally stitch a quarter inch on my outside piece and then on my linings I normally stitch like a 3 8 inch seam just so that I can help pull any extra inside fabric on the lining out but for the pattern's sake I just added an extra quarter of an inch so I'm no longer using the original pattern I have that put aside and what I am actually using is my uh, adjusted pattern and what I tend to cut first is my piece here with the pattern so let me show you on this one so basically I have not uh, I've had this folded so it's it's not gonna cooperate all the way here but what I do is I just get some clips to clip it down clip my edges down so it holds it in place and I'm just trying to line up my edges get a nice fold because all I need is one fold instead of two now So, oops. Then I take my pattern, and especially if you have a directional print, I just put one this way, and then I flip and go down here and do the other cut that way. So, what I do is I make sure that I've got material underneath, and then I go ahead and clip my pattern so that it doesn't move just clip it here to make sure it's not going to move
Okay, this one's broke. Is it broke? Yes, it's broke. <laughs> Okay, and the fact that I cut an extra inch when I only needed a half inch, it gives me a little bit of room so that I can make sure that I've got both edges into the seam when I go to cut. So what I do is just basically lay it down here. If I need to, I'll put a clip down here at this point. And then I just go ahead and rotary cut this out and then I just scissor cut into the last little corner here you could also take a marker and mark this if you wanted to or a pen you could take that and mark and then you could just cut on the lines if you wish as well for me I'm going to rotary cut so I'll do that and come right back just want to slide you guys down so I have room to cut <laughs> And then whenever I get to a point that has a clip somewhere, I try to move it so that it's not going to affect my ruler. And then I also don't want to clip into here. I want to make sure I'm, I'm going to be using this space for my inside pocket and my strap. So I don't want to go in and get rid of, go too far. So I don't mind using my scissors to do the final cuts. Matter of fact, I'm going to get a smaller ruler here. And it's difficult because now I'm leaning over the table, so I've cut a little bit of my paper, but that's okay. And now I'm up here, ready to do this corner. I take that clip off, slide it to the edge, cut, rotate this around, pull this back out of the way and I cut my final cut here on this one so right there and then I take this clip off and do the top Alright, so as you can see right here, I'm, I don't have it cut all the way and that's okay because I am going to do that with scissors. So let's get that part done. And I try to see if I got them both, and I do. All right. And then down in this corner, I need to get this as well. All right. So then I've got one piece cut and I just go ahead and put a clip in it to hold it. I don't really need to, but I do. <laughs> and then I'm going to flip this pattern and do the same thing down here, cutting this edge. And now that I know I have a straight edge from the previous cut, I can just line up my bottom here, put a clip. I will probably be moving this clip pretty fast <laughs> since I'll be making cuts. Again, if you need to push in your tip just to hold it, you can do that. <clears throat> All right, and we're going to cut this as well. So, first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to cut this angle off. So, we're going to get rid of that. Okay, 
so that's done I'm also going to cut my top edge all right and now we're going on the inside and remember I don't want to just cut across because I want to recycle as much material as I can into this project and then here I'm going to take that off and we're going to come down here line this up and cut the rest of this off and we should have some part that needs to be clipped here <laughs> all right so again I'm going to end up cutting this into a four and a half by six and a half for my pocket and then I'm also going to take one of these and do the same thing to the top fabric as well however I'm going to take the stitches out of that but I'll talk about that when we get there so here we go with this <laughs> So now that I've cut these pieces out, I don't like using the pattern over and over and over. So what I do is once I have these pieces cut out, I fold my fabric in half, again, because my rotary cutter will not cut through all of these layers. And then I go ahead and clip these units onto here and I make sure that my edges are aligned where I'm clipping. So I go ahead and clip these down and then I also put one on the other end yes I want to make sure that I'm able to clip and cut all of my layers that I'm not going to be short and then you can put as many clips as you need just to hold this in place. And then we're also going to cut this out just like I did before except that now I'm using my pattern piece um, that I cut from the inside lining to trim around so let's get that done so I'm going to cut this top piece first so I'm just going to move my clip in go ahead and cut that I always pull my pieces out before I move my ruler so that I know I have my pieces cut okay take this I can put this back over here trim off this top edge slide this in and so that way I find my patterns to be more accurate than if I cut my bulky piece from the pattern I always just cut my bulky piece from my lining piece once it's cut because my pattern keeps changing if I trim just a little bit and it's okay in the end it's just that I need to know that I'm making some adjustments to my pattern all right so we're gonna go up here move this clip in trim off this corner that one went pretty easy and now I want to Put that clip back over here and we're going to trim these inside lines here and I'm going to have a lot that I don't cut because it's thicker now it's thicker than my lining so I will have to use my scissors okay turn it around and now I'm going to do this side here move 
down. All right. And then, final step here is that I do need to cut right here where they meet. So there'll be two units instead of one. All right. So, oh, I think I still got to do the top over here. So what we're going to do is get our scissors again and we're going to go in and we're going to clip until so we can connect my big pieces without cutting through it because this is going to be my handle. little seam here and then I've got a little bit on this top to cut still so I'm going to just move this down so that it doesn't move still even down there take this clip off and we're going to trim this end and one of this one has a little bit it was just a tad bit of space left in the middle so we're going to trim that off all right guys i um lost camera battery i can only record up to 25 minutes so i've gone over my 25 minutes i don't know where i left off but i have finished cutting my lining pieces so if i missed anything i apologize what I then did was took one of my larger pieces that were in the inside and I am now cutting it for a pocket that's four and a half by six and a half. So that's what I'm currently cutting for my inside pocket that I have added to this pattern. What I didn't show you is that I take a seam ripper and take out all of this quilting because I don't want this pocket to be this thick. So I do take out all the stitching. I'm just not going to show you that on camera. I would normally do that before I cut, but I think I should be okay doing it now. Also from this fabric, we're going to be uh, using this fabric with the stabilizer on it so that we can use it as zipper tabs. So my zipper is like one and a quarter, so I'm just going to cut three pieces. No, I'm going to cut two pieces that is an inch and a half, and then I can trim it up later. So an inch and a half, and then I can square it up when I need to. I do leave the foam on this because I found that the difference in the weight of the fabric made a difference to me. It may not make a difference to you, but I do leave foam on the front ends of my zipper tabs. I do put on two zipper tabs. I go ahead and cut some of these units here for the back of my zipper tabs so because I do want some of this fabric with the lining to be on the inside so I do use um, I leave the foam on this so I have a front and a back for each piece and then this right here is my pocket front and I need to cut the pocket back so this piece here I'm still going to be using in a minute so let's go ahead and cut the pocket back it's going to be four and a half by six and a half and it's going to be inside this definitely can be this is my bottom piece <laughs> and it definitely can go in there because it's going to be on the inside of the pocket so it won't show as well so yes so you can cut your pieces from triangles for your uh, zipper tabs or you can cut from uh, these rectangles. So either one will work. Now I'm cutting four and a half by six and a half from my inside lining pocket. 
Okay. So I have that's going to go with this. Now again, I do have to take my stitches out of the foam. I don't want foam in this pocket. I will cut a piece of Pellon SF101 to stabilize my front fabric, but I will not be using the thick foam in there. Okay. Last thing here. We want to cut this piece into five inches wide. Um, so I'm just going to square up an end and it's not going to be well it, it will be five inches wide I'm going to square up one end in the top where I've got five inches everywhere because we do want five inches wide and then I'm going to turn this and I'm going to square up my five inch mark as long as I can cut it from this piece it should be 10 or more, 10 inches or more. I have 10 and an eighth. Right there. And this is going to be our handle. And again, I am going to go take all of the stitching off of this. And then when I get this foam free, I'm going to use this foam and cut a piece of foam that's one inch that I'm going to put inside of my handle when I fold it. So I'll, I'll do that, take the stitching out of these items, these two items here, and then I'll come back and show you what I do with that. So I have taken the stitches out of my both of my pieces. This is my strap fabric and this is my pocket fabric and I just wanted to show you what they look like with the stitches out and then I just put this into the scrap pile. <laughs> I don't throw them away because I can use them behind snaps and things like that or I can sew pieces together and make larger pieces as well. And then from this long one I actually cut a strip that I'm going to put inside of my handle. Now technically you could cut this strip one and a quarter inches, but I cut one and an eighth because I'm using foam and it has thick sides, so I'm going to give myself a little wiggle room. So what I do is I just cut pieces one and an eighth inch off of this. So I'm just going to set that aside. I've already cut this from another piece that I have. And then once I cut the strip off, I just square up an edge here and then I cut this into nine and a half inches long so just a little bit shorter so that uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine and a half is right here I cut it just a little bit shorter so that when I'm tucking this under to stitch it down, I don't have foam all the way to the edge. So then I have something that looks like this. So what I do is I take this and I go to my iron and I press to get a center line. And then I fold into the center. And then I fold this in into the center and ideally they would both be there. Then I insert my strip in the middle, eyeball is good, and then I close this up and then give it a nice press. You can press soft and stable foam. And then I go to my sewing machine with matching thread and I stitch down each side. And that would be sufficient for most people, but for me, I like my handles to have strength. So I add three more lines of stitching in the middle. And so I have something that now looks like this. So this is also a change that I made uh, from the pattern. So I just um, working on four bags at a time. So you're going to see me switching out fabrics. This video is also going to go over a number of days because I'm working on four of these at the same time and then this piece here 
is my front side of my pocket lining and I have Pelon SF 101 shape flex that I have cut a piece of interfacing that is four and one half by six and one half and I'm just going to go ahead and iron that to the back here and now here is my fabric front that will be going with my um, fabric that has vinyl fuse on it that's going to be the inside pocket of my lining and all of this will be put on top here so now we have all of our pieces cut so let's go over the cut list here so I have a front outside main piece so I have two outside main pieces that I have quilted also from main fabric I have one pocket also from main fabric scraps I have cut two tabs for the outside they are super longer than what I need but that's okay for now then from my lining pieces I have two inside main body shape pieces I have my pocket inside lining and then I also have the insides of my zipper tab so that's what these are for my zipper tabs I don't know if I said that so I have all of my pieces cut and remember I have vinyl fuse on these pieces all of the lining pieces and I took the stitching off of this to make to add Pelon SF 101 and then I also have a piece of soft and stable on the inside of my strap so those are the pieces that are needed for cutting so I have other fabric I need to cut for this I need to cut all the other pockets and tabs and straps I have not done that for the other ones so I'll do that and then we'll probably come back tomorrow because uh, I'm not trying to stay up too late tonight it's almost 1 a.m. but I will just come back and show you all of my pieces cut how about that just wanted to come back and show you that I have all of my pieces cut and it is let's see a quarter to 2 a.m. so I am actually going to stop right here and call it a night but I have all of my pieces grouped by the fabrics that they go with and then the only issue is is that I do have to do top stitching when I'm like um, after I stitch on my zippers and things like that and I do want my top stitching thread to match so what I think I am going to do is uh, work on these two because they're the same fabric and so I won't have to actually change seams all the time so I'll be working on these two bags and then I'm going to put these two aside and work on those later although the pink and blue are the ones that I actually need to get done first but hey things happen right <laughs> but I'll work on these two as I'm making the video so I'll be you won't know that I'm actually switching between items I guess as far as fabric is concerned but what it will do is allow me to do double steps as I'm coming back to give more points so I'm gonna go to bed we'll come back tomorrow and we'll start working on the components for sewing these bags together good night everybody we are back with day two of sewing I have skipped several days because I have an injury <laughs> and I just didn't want to take a chance on hurting my hand but I have been doing some sewing and I thought that I would get you up to date on the steps you need to take so first thing you need to do on your 22 inch length zipper and you can opt to have a single or a double pull I opted to do doubles I already have those done I do zippers by the yard so these are the ones that are going to go with this fabric that I'm actually going to be finishing all the way throughout this project today and I'm going to be using my other two as I'm stepping you through these steps where I don't need to do any top stitching 
So the first thing we need to do is take our pieces that are for our zipper ends. We are going to put this right sides together. So since this is the outside, I'm going to put it right side facing down. And then on the back side, I'm going to put right side facing down as well. And I am going to stitch this. And when I go over my zipper teeth, I do go back and forth two or three times. And we're actually going to do that to both ends of our zipper. <clears throat> so that's what we have here. Then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to pull those ends out once they've been sewed let's see if i've got one here yeah i do have one where i've sewed these ends and then all you need to do is pull these out make sure that they're straight i pull these out and then i top stitch an eighth of an inch along the top here to make sure that my pieces stay in place and then after I've done that I just simply take a pin to just hold these edges together you could also at this time cut off any extra my zippers are like one and a fourth but I just cut one and a half to make sure I had enough room so you would do that to both ends of your zipper as well and that is what we have here need another pin <clears throat> and I will be trimming these up before I stitch so I'll do that off camera we all know how to trim um, your zipper straight along the edge I'll just use my ruler and cut that off but I wanted to show you that these two parts have been completed next step we want to do is complete our inside pocket we're going to take our outside fabric that we have put SF 101 on the back of plus our lining fabric that has the vinyl we're going to put those right sides together and we are going to stitch around this but leave an opening for turning so we're going to start stitching here go all the way around and then we're going to leave this open so that we can turn it. Before you turn it, you want to clip your corners and you want to make sure that you are close but that you are not going to cut the stitching. It's very important that you not cut the stitches. And then you want to turn your bag inside out. Sometimes I like to turn my bags with the vinyl. I find it's just thick. The iron on vinyl that I have on my fabric so it doesn't work as well but on normal bags I tend to fold the top two corners down and then I can push my corners out but with this being a little buckier it does take a little bit more work to get your corners perfect and so then here is one where I have turned through the opening here and I have gotten my corners out and then I top stitch an eighth of an inch from the top so the bottom is still open it's going to be closed when we're stitching this onto our actual bag so that's your pocket you are then going to take your pocket got to figure out which one has it <laughs> And then the next step is we want to sew this pocket onto our actual bag and you want to sew it it doesn't matter right now which one but this is actually going to be the back of your uh, zipper cosmetic case so we just find the center by folding in half so we fold our back piece in half then we fold our pocket in half and we use those lines to line up center 
when you put your pocket on you want to come down I'd say about a half inch from this seam line it's good and this is also an addition that I added to the bag so please be aware of that also adding a quilted fabric up here is also an addition okay so we're just gonna sew that down one eighth of an inch along all three edges and then we are going to put in a snap here so I already got my center line I can see from the fold and the vinyl so I will just pop that in at this part of the snap that protrudes out to the back and then we're going to use a snap since these are plastic I can just use this plastic snap tool that I have and you could also put your snap on prior to sewing it to the case as well all right so that's done got it smashed in there really good so now that we have that we want to take the female portion of our snap and it's going to sit right underneath so how I know where it is I wait to do this part and then I just feel the back where I have the hole on the back side and I go ahead and press into that now if you feel that you don't have enough stabilization if you're just using one piece of fabric I would recommend using a scrap to put underneath here before you put your snap in it will help give it st stability but since I have vinyl as well as fabric I think I'll be okay so I'm going to put this snap on and then I have to get all of this into my tool which is the fun part because <laughs> there's not a whole lot of room here <clears throat> and I think I need to change fingers because I'm already hurting my hand here so So it is a little bit of work here to get this one on if you want to put this on prior to uh, putting your pocket on I would say put this about an inch down so let's see put it about an inch down from this here but centered and then we can go ahead and center close this pocket and don't worry about the vinyl it's going to relax back later so that's how you do your pocket and if I wanted to put this on first I could also this one's never been a problem but I can get my center mark here press this in get the male part of the snap <clears throat> and put this on Hmm. 
you never realize how much you use your thumbs <laughs> see if I can press it on here a little bit better that's better and then we just snap it this part really is easy I'm just uh, because I'm I've had some issues so that's what's going on with me <clears throat> so I just want to get another piece here and say I wanted to put this here I could say okay I'm going to put this here I'm going to lift this up I want my piece to go where my finger is I can just go ahead and punch a hole <clears throat> and then come from the back so I know where my hold it my hole is now then we add the female end right here press that down and then we get into here and see if we can get this snapped up it's a little bit still a little bit cumbersome but it's a little bit better without the pocket being on it and then just squeeze that down okay so when I go to put this pocket on I will go ahead and snap it into position first so I know where it's sitting okay my snap is not working <laughs> have a bad snap so I will have to take off this snap you see this snap is a bad snap so it's just not gonna work this should be pushed in and it's not and I don't think I can correct it, but we can try. I like to show you all when things don't go as planned as well. And I know I'm also having some issues with, you know, not being able to fully use my thumb. But let's just make sure. Because it should have pushed all of that in. There it goes. <laughs> there it goes so now I would just snap this on and then just make sure that this pocket is straight when I go to stitch my quarter inch and as I'm stitching that quarter inch it's also closing up the bottom of the bag so I will finish that I think we already talked about the making of the strap and I will just quickly go back over that just in case I did not but I have my piece of fabric I fold it in the center I folded it in half first to find the center and then I folded each edge into the center and then I just centered in a piece of soft and stable and then I quarter inch stitch all the way down on both sides and then I like to stabilize my handles the more stitching you put in it the more stability your handle will have so I add three additional lines of stitching as well quarter inch in quarter inch in and then just down the center so once you get that done you're going to take the back of your bag and you're going to come down about two and an eight two and a quarter inches and you're going to situate this handle in this middle section here so let me turn this so it's straight so you're going to situate it in the middle top portion about two and one eighth to two and a quarter down from the top what i also like to do is fold my ends under twice and the um and then i do a box stitch and then i also do an x through it and i do the same thing over here fold that back And then you want to make sure that you have space in your handle so that you can actually pick your bag up. 
so you can decide how much space you want there is no right or wrong way to do that if you want yours flat just know that you're gonna have a harder time getting your hand in there so make sure you put some space in there and so let me show you one of these that I have done so this is my bag handle here again I'm gonna pull up close so you can see that I stitched the box around and then I also stitched an X through on both sides. This is the back. It's going to go with the lining that has the pocket when you're putting, when you're sewing this to your zipper. Just keep that in mind. And then on the front, which does not have anything on it, you're going to put your label if you have one. I just come down about an inch and a half so let me measure that about an inch and a half yeah about an inch and a half from the top uh, anywhere from an inch and a half to two and a half because this is going to be actually on the side this is how your bag is going to sit so you do want your label in the upper portion this time okay so I am going to go sew all of the things that I have not sewn <laughs> and uh, when I come back it'll be time for us to sew on the zippers okay so we're back and we're now ready to sew our zippers I have sewn my handles onto both of my back pieces. I have also sewn my label onto both back pieces. And do note that when you're putting this back together, the one with your label goes with the plain pocket. This is actually the front. It doesn't matter which one you start sewing with. And then the one with the handle is actually the back. And that's the one you want with the pocket. So you're also going to need your zipper and what I have done is found the center of my zipper and how you do that is you fold your fabric edges together and then you find the center going down your zip and then you stick a pin in center center for my bag I fold it in half also come down center you can press or put a pin in and then we're going to match those ends up and we're going to clip and then once we clip that we can take those pins out <clears throat> and clip all the way around when you get to your corner you can put a clip just a little snip in your zipper when you get to the actual corner just a little snip just to make it so that it will ease around the corner a little better put another clip there and then keep going down okay. then you would do the same thing to the other side but I'm also going to go ahead and start with this so that I can just cut the camera and do the rest <laughs> so I am going to match up my center with my center and actually it'll be easy because basically I'm lining up my corners and just clipping and then I've got my center line here that's very close to that <clears throat> and then when I get to this end tip I want to make sure that both tips on the back and the front are in the same position make sure that they are aligned 
and then I fill in with clips in the middle okay then once I do this to both ends I go ahead and stitch this with about a 3 8 of an inch seam so I have already done that here so I have already done that with this piece here and one thing that I did do is I turned to the other side my front fabric and I did cut the foam out of the seam allowance as close as I could I did quilt my fabric and as I was snipping the threads just came right up so I just went ahead and took those out and now we're ready to turn this to the front side <clears throat> you get it nice and flat and then I like to pull my pieces down put a clip in to hold it temporarily do the same thing over here on this end pull that end down so that things are matched up make sure I've got it nice and flat if you need to you can pull your bottoms and put a clip in there as well if needed and all we're doing is trying to hold the top fabric flat and what we're now going to do is just go stitch one eighth of an inch seam across the top so I'll do that and then I'll come back all right I am back and I have top stitched one eighth of an inch from the edge all the way around to the other side here and now the next step is to add the front onto my panel, right sides matching, and then turn around and add the back where the lining pieces are touching. And then we're going to stitch one quarter, no, we're going to stitch three eighths of an inch, I'm sorry, all the way around. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to do that for both of my pieces so that I can get both of my bags up to date and then I'll come back where I have all of my units pinned together I mean sewed together and then they'll all be top stitched here as well all right I am here and I have both sides of my piece sewed to the zipper and I do want to come back and give you a tip after you sew the second side on in order to do this top stitching here you do need to open up your zipper so that you have room to maneuver this and get things flat on your machine bed otherwise it would be very difficult to do that so now I'm just going to zip this back up for now <clears throat> And we're actually going to be turning these back inside out actually so I'm going to put the right side with the right side <clears throat> and the wrong side is over here with the wrong side so I've got right sides together on my lining right sides together on my outside okay so this is where I differ from the pattern because I actually added that quarter inch seam here um, and I did that for two reasons one for ease of stitching this so that it wasn't just all in a loop and number two is that when I go to turn this bag inside out we were turning this bag inside out along this edge and we had to stitch in three quarters to an inch on each side which only left two and a half to three inches to turn this entire bag inside out and it just wasn't enough room and it was stressful for me and that's because I'm using foam as well it was difficult with just two pieces of fabric as well in my opinion uh, with <clears throat> with just regular quilt batting um, so on the outside pieces of the bag you're just going to stitch one quarter of an inch seam all the way through so I will just get some clips here <clears throat> and guys 
I think I mentioned that as I was working on this project, I got cut by uh, with some hair trimmers. So I was cleaning my hair trimmers and they cut my thumb. So if I haven't mentioned that already, that's what's happened with my thumb and that's why I'm not able to use it right now. Alright, so that's that side. You'd be stitching quarter inch along the entire seam. However, on this lining part, we've got 10 inch cut right here right now. So we've got plenty of room where we can turn our bag inside out. So, I like to stitch at least, say, 2 inches on each side. To the corner and then when we're stitching our other seam we've got a good piece of the material stitched so that's what I like to do you can go ahead and do that as well any opening you leave is going to be bigger than the opening you would have had on the side so anything larger than three inches opening you're doing very well so I'd say leave at least a five inch opening along this bottom. So I'm going to back stitch here, stop stitching at this clip, back stitch. Back stitch here and go all the way to the end and also back stitch. And then we're going to leave the space in between open. So, got the magic of working on two of these at one time. I have already done that seam, that stitching here. So here I have it stitched all the way. And then over here I have this opening that I can get my hand in so that I can turn this bag when it's time. Now before we do our next seams, we do want to go inside this bag now and make sure that we open this zipper doesn't have to be opened all the way. I'm just going to open it up on the top. Here. Because our next steps now is we're going to take this corner here and bring it up. And this is very difficult without using this thumb over here. And we're going to bring it up to where it's centered right here the center seam is in the center of our strap which also is where our zipper is so right now I'm not worried about the lining I'm just stitching worried about my front piece right now sometimes you have to maneuver and push stuff down to get it exactly where you want I'm going to take this pin that I have holding in my piece and I am going to put it in this seam right here if I can okay and then I'm going to pull this straight until it comes to the point here and then we're going to clip that. And then we'll do the same thing to this piece over here. Again, pulling that lining out of the way. We don't want to stitch on the lining piece. So I'm just pushing that lining out the way, pull my end to the corner here, get that to match up, pin that to hold it, and then we keep going up. Now what we're actually going to do is we're going to stitch up 
to where this strip is. So we're going to stitch, back stitch from here, go up and stop when we get to where this strip is. So this space in between here, coming across the zipper over here, is not going to be stitched. Sometimes you can't get very close, so if you are this far out, that's fine, because we're going to come back and connect stitch wherever you stop. So, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. We're not going to stitch up and over. We're just going to stitch up to the zipper. So, this right here is our zipper tab fabric. So, stitch up to the zipper tab fabric. You're going to do that on both sides as well as on this end as well. I will do that and I will come back. All right. So we are back and I do want to remind you again to make sure that before you finish this step that you have opened your zipper um, so that you can get into your zipper and it makes it a little bit easier to open your bag. So my zipper was open I'd say along the top parts of the bag you don't have to go around the curve and so I have now stitched all of these seams and I've stitched up as far as I could where my presser foot made me stop on all four of these and then the next step is I take the seam allowances and I put my stitch seam right side together with the one that's underneath so I got my lining sitting right on top of my um, outer fabric and then I just put a clip to hold that and I do that on both sides so I just line up the seams make sure that they are on top of each other and then I put a clip just a little bit down from where I lined up so that I can get in there and stitch and then I go ahead and I have a pin in the back already and I can take that pin and go through and put it through this layer too and then what I do is I start and stop stitching where I did my back stitching before I come up to the seam allowance and then come back down and meet on the other side and then you just trim this extra part off. Now, I do want to show you that the uh, other reason why I changed having the bottom open where I split the bag in half is because this same seam where it's very awkward to stitch in the first place, it's where you have to leave an opening to turn the bag. And so you don't have very much room. And so it was a lot for me to turn this entire bag through an opening, say this big. Because I got to back stitch, leave an opening, and then I've got to get some stitching up here as well. So that made it e an easier step for me. I'm not going to tell you tall tales. This is the worst part of this bag for me is stitching these four seams and completing this stitch across here. Um... Again, once you finish stitching all of that, I'm looking on both sides to make sure all of my stitching is intact. Then I can just go ahead and trim off this excess here. And so I still have to trim this one, but I went ahead and finished my second bag just so I could show you the finishing step. Just got one last step after turning here. So I'm just going to put that one aside and get the one that I have stitched on my side seams. So they all are lined up through here where I've stitched around and through. So then the last step is that we're going to go through the lining and we're going to turn this entire bag right side out and your zipper should be open so you shouldn't have any problems and I can just go ahead and start pushing this now it's hard for me with my thumb to push this through so doing it a little different today and 
and then go back and try to push the rest of this through. Oops. <laughs> all right. So, I like to get all into my seam allowances, make sure that I push everything up. I just saw where I have just a little bit of my sewing showing here. So, I am going to later go back and restitch that line a little bit. So, you want to look before you close up your center seam your inside lining seam so that's the first time that's happened where I'm going to have to go back and return it and redo it but that's why you always inspect your bag before you turn that last seam so now I'm just checking the other side and uh, the other side looks okay so I'm just going to act like this is perfect for you so we can finish this off for our video <clears throat> until I come back with my finished bags so I like to get my bags positioned go ahead and zip it up to see how it's looking there so we go ahead and do a zip up just to make sure everything is in the right position so we've got our handle sitting on top like it should We've got the label sitting in the front like it should. And then when we open, we should have our pocket sitting right here in the back. Able to receive items you don't want to drop to the bottom. Again, I would um, then just take this bottom seam and make these ends meet up. for our final stitch and I would just machine stitch this one eighth of an inch from the edge to finish that off so that's the last thing that I got to do I'm going to go ahead and finish fix this seam on which side right here it's right here I missed the spot my stitching must not have matched up in that quarter inch and I couldn't see it on the wrong side so I do know that I need to go back in here and I'm going to just slide a pin in here so I know which side I need to fix make it a little easier on myself and then I'm going to go fix that I'm gonna come back with both bags completed all right so I'm back with this bag and I just wanted to show you up close of me top stitching this with my machine and if you've got any threads anywhere go ahead and trim all of those now the one thing with using iron on vinyl is that you will have like little wrinkles and creases if you have a ham you could put a ham in here and try to press from the outside I just go in and do try to smooth it out as much as I can Just try to smooth it out a little bit. And then I go ahead and give it a zip to see how it's going to sit. Right here. my bag is now ready I do uh, go ahead and stuff them like you do purses that you get retail I go ahead and take some brown shipping paper and I go ahead and I ball that up and put it inside of my bag And that also helps it to keep its shape, especially for those that I'm shipping as well. 
I um, don't want them to get damaged. And then I, um, if I'm shipping, I do put them inside of a plastic bag. Close that up like that. And again, we want to do a little bit of shaping here. And when stuff is in it, it'll have a little bit more weight on it as well. You can see now this end right there. This end here needs to come out a little more. So you just want to play with the shaping. So that's bag number one. Bag number two, I am going to stuff it as well. So that is it for this video. If you got any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the description. I know that I changed a lot on this pattern, but I do thank Christine of Christine Home Affairs for a great product. <laughs> I like the end result, but it is a little bit of work to produce this bag. But I love them. <laughs> and I sold mine, so I still have the two that I'm currently making, and then I have two more to make as well. And um, uh, then I'm going to make mine, and I don't know if I'm going to make any more of these bags. <laughs> they are a little time consuming. But there are my two bags that I have made, and I do have all of my parts that I showed you previously for my other bags here. I just stopped working on those because it was to the point where I needed to change to the particular thread uh, color so I could do top stitching when I added the zipper and so forth and so on. So that's why these are not completed. But I'm looking forward to finishing those as well. Thank you all so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Share my channel with your other quilting friends, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye, T-Quilters. Stay blessed. Thank you.